got an amazing, the talented, Will Poulter! Hi Will, how are you doing? I'm good, Charlie. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, it's a pleasure, pleasure talking to you. I'm really, I'm really glad to be doing this. I've been looking forward to it all week. It's uh, always nice to see a familiar face in, uh, in yeah. isolation. It's uh, difficult times, but I'm so glad that you're doing this. Are you ready for some funny questions, some interesting questions and some serious questions? I'm, I'm ready for all the questions you got, Charlie. Throw them at me. Well, first of all, have your best impression at the ready. My best impression at the ready, okay. I'm sure you have many very good be best impressions. When did you decide you wanted to become an actor? That's a really good question. I think the first time I can remember performing live was when I was sort of 10 or 11. <laughs> but I think the first time that I really sort of decided that that's what I wanted to do was during the shooting of my first film. Um, so I was lucky enough to get my first uh, break when I was 12. Um, and I did um, a film called Son of Rambo and I loved it so much and I had so much fun doing it. And, you know, I wasn't all that happy at school as I've kind of discussed with you before, um, but finding something that I was really, really um, passionate about and really sort of um, happy doing um, was huge for me. And, um, you know, I think you can relate to how much, you know, performance can help you when you're having sort of yeah. down moments or mm -hmm. when, maybe, you know, you're not enjoying school too much. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the opportunity to, to go away and, and shoot a film really made me sort of realise I wanted to, wanted to do it for a career if I could. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Has the arts always interested you? Yeah, I think it has. Um, I think more than kind of the traditional sort of academic subjects, as you know, you've got to do all of them, but the arts definitely, music and drama and performance in general, have always kind of been the, the subjects that I've enjoyed the, the most. Um, and uh, yeah, I think for as, for as long as I can remember, I've been sort of performing and um, at least annoying people with, uh, <laughs> with uh, you know, characters and impressions and whatever else. <laughs> as well as being such an amazing actor, can you sing and dance as well? Oh, uh, I can just about kind of sing, Charlie. I've got a pretty limited range um, <laughs> and I can't dance. I can't dance at all. I'm like a baby giraffe. I dance, so. <laughs> hey, everyone can dance in their own special way. You can, you can make up a new dance move for the baby giraffe. There you go. Okay, well, maybe I could turn it into a comedy dance, yeah. Or I might need some, <laughs> I need some lessons to be able to be a that. Well. Your mum and dad were both in medicine. Did you ever want to follow in their footsteps? Do you know what? Um, I never really had the grades for it, Charlie. Um, and, uh, you know, academically, it, it never really clicked for me. I really struggled in the sort of subjects that you'd need to, to go into that field. But I so admire my family for, you know, the various roles they have. My, my sister's a, a nurse and is currently working um, in intensive care. So she's kind of relatively frontline at the moment. And, um, you know, my mum nurse, my dad's a um, professor of medicine as well. Um, so, you know, I'm immensely proud of my, my family and I, I leave it up to them in full knowledge that they're kind of more capable than, than me. <laughs> I'm sure if you put your mind to it, you'd be very capable. But if that's not what you wanted to do, then you can't force yourself to do it. You're right. You're right. Where did you train? Um, so I basically haven't had any sort of technically haven't had any kind of professional training. Um, I, I started doing drama at school and kind of got cast sort of quite randomly while I was at school. Um, but I didn't actually end up going to drama school. Um, oh. I was kind of really, yeah, lucky to sort of learn on the job a a as I went. Um, and it was, I think, after my, after my first film that I kind of got signed and I just sort of ended up trying to kind of balance school and, and acting as best I could until I left and then, and then tried to sort of commit to it as a, as a full-time career. Yeah. How did you manage to secure your first role? 
So that happened when a casting director came around to our school and um, they were, funnily enough, and this is interesting because obviously me and you met through um, Anti-Bullying Pro. Yeah. Um, they were looking for a kid to play a bully in a film. And um, they were looking for like a young blonde haired kid to play the bully. And um, they uh, picked a bunch of us out of a, uh, I think we were either in the playground or in the lunch hall at the time. I can't quite remember. And then um, later on that day, I was in English class and my drama teacher appeared at the window with a notice that said three o'clock audition. And I was trying to sort of pay attention, but I was also like looking over sort of at my teacher at the window with this sign. And um, I was really excited. I'd, I'd never been to an audition before. And anyway, got really lucky. I, I, I went to that audition and um, I got through to the next round. And then I kind of kept getting through to, you know, the various rounds. And my, my mum was sort of driving me to these auditions. And each time we thought we wouldn't get any further. Um, and then, yeah, very fortunately, I, I, I got the job and I shot that over eight weeks of my summer holiday. So it, it fitted in well and school allowed me to do it. That's very lucky that a casting director came to your school. It was super lucky. I'm really fortunate that that, that happened like that. Yeah. What is your dream role that you know you could never play? This could be a female role or an animal or a child. Oh, that's a good question. Um, dream role that I could never play. Oh, wow. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, you know what? As a kid, I always wanted to be in Bugsy Malone. Um, and I'm aware that now as an adult, I can't really be in Bugsy Malone because the whole <laughs> point is that they're kids playing adults. Um, but uh, that's something I wish I'd done on screen. <laughs> that's cool. That's question. really cool. <laughs> oh. What is your most memorable moment today? I'm sure you have so many in your massive, massive acting career. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, you know, I, I have really strong kind of special memories of when I did Narnia, just because it was, I was, I was 16 at the time and I moved to Australia with my family and it sort of felt like, um kind of you know the 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 first time that i was really um i suppose like experiencing kind of the adult work world you know um and that's not in any way to sort of detract from my first experience um but then i was very much you know finding my feet and um it was also new to me i i wasn't really sort of quite aware of what i was a part of until afterwards and then when I did Narnia, you know, there was, I think, a requirement to sort of step up a bit and grow up quickly. And, um, you know, moving to Australia was a big, a big thing for me and my family. But I was very grateful that they came and supported me. And like you, you know, I've got a really lovely supportive mum. So her coming with me and okay. um, helping me through that was, was, was great. And uh, so, yeah, I think my, my best memories are probably from, from that. And I remember my last day, like it was yesterday. It was just a really fun, exciting, you know, sense of achievement. And I, I was really grateful to, to have had that experience. You actually moved to my home country to film Narnia. I was actually born in Australia. Were you really? Whereabouts yeah. in Australia were you born? Um, I was born in Toowoomba, just outside Brisbane. Wow, I never knew that. Amazing. Really? So we were shooting, we were shooting um, not far from Brisbane. We were on the Gold Coast, so we were in <gasps> Queensland. Yeah, yeah. So we were we were quite close to um, to Surface Paradise. <gasps> My favorite favorite beach. I have many memories really? going down to Surface Paradise. That's amazing. Yeah, it's uh, it's an incredible place, and it was definitely a change of. Uh, change of pace to life. I wasn't used to like, you know, being able to go to go surfing after you finish your homework and stuff. I, I missed that. Yeah. Were you ever bullied as a child? And if so, how did this affect you? 
Yeah, I, I was. And um, I also witnessed a lot of bullying. I feel like, um, unfortunately, too many people kind of accept it as just part of the school experience. And um, I think that's, that's actually in lots of ways at the root of the problem, you know. Um, no one should have to experience uh, bullying. Um, and, you know, if we accept that school is something that is supposed to prepare us, you know, um, as well as possible to enter the outside world and be as happy and as functional as we possibly can, then really we should be doing our utmost to make sure that, that bullying has no place in a kind of school environment. Um, I think it really held me back in terms of my, my self-confidence. Mm -hmm. um, I think my ability to feel sort of secure in my own skin, you know, um, and I think finding performance was, was great for me. It was, it, was a, it was a wonderful escape from the times I felt sort of down and uh, the times that I, I didn't want to necessarily be around people in my own skin. But then I think I had to, later on in life, I think, address the effects of it and make sure that with acting and in playing characters, I wasn't just running away from, from who I am. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's so, so true. Hmm. I had the pleasure of meeting you last year at Anti-Bullying Week with the Diana Award where I spoke and became an official ambassador. As you know, I suffered badly at the hands of bullies and speaking out scared my mum as she thought it might make it worse. But then I remember her saying to me, if I, had, if I have people like you and Sam Rapford in my life who guide and influence me, then I'll be absolutely fine and turn into an amazing, caring man like the both of you. So thank you for taking the time to always speak with me and allow me to keep in touch. So how did you get involved with the Diana Award in the first place? Charlie, you are so sweet. First of all, um it's it's your it's your mum who I think uh, has to take the credit for the for the young man that you're mm -hmm. you're becoming and, and secondly um I probably I absolutely loved Sam and, and got to meet him and yeah. hang out with him at the same event that I met you but yeah. I probably speak for Sam when I say that you're the one that inspires us and mm -hmm. um your speech made me cry but in a very in a very good way and um no I just so I so appreciate you um I so appreciate you kind of uh, extending kindness and, and maintaining contact with me. It's, it means a lot to me. Um, and anyway, I'm sorry, I forgot the second part of your question. What was the, what was the second part? Um, how did you get involved with the Diana Award in the first place? Oh, good question. Um, so I became involved in the Diana Award thanks to my friend Alex Holmes, who's the CEO and, and founder. Good old Alex. Yeah. Um, and I became involved in 2010 and I think Alex reached out to me on Twitter initially, I think is how it happened. Um, so I did a workshop with Alex in 2010 and then we've kind of just stayed in contact ever since. Um, and so, yeah, the, the last workshop um, that I would have done was the one that I met you at 10 years later. Mm -hmm. Often drama and performance was something that, you know, really connected people and broke down, you know, um, a lot of kind of social barriers. And it was interesting to see how when people are enjoying a performance and, you know, everyone is one audience, that all of the sort of, you know, um, things that prevent people from coming together and treating each other with kindness kind of fall away. And, uh, you know, laughter in that way can be a really great medicine. So, um, I really enjoyed the, the workshops because anytime I've done them with, with Alex, with Anti-Bullying Pro and, you know, wherever the school may be, you know, in the country, um, I, I kind of see the same effect, you know, take, take place. And it's, it's a really nice thing. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's just an amazing thing, the Diana Award. What advice would you give yourself as a child looking back now as an adult? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> don't worry so much. Um, yeah. I used to worry about worrying, you know. Um, I wish that, I wish that I'd read more books, Charlie. I have to say, I found reading really boring, but um, I didn't really discover just how happy books make me until much later. How do you feel about reading? I absolutely love reading. I have like four whole shelves just filled to the absolute brim with books. 
plus my bedside table is full of them and I've got stacks of them on the floor. See, somehow that doesn't surprise me, Charlie. You're, you're so smart that that doesn't, that doesn't surprise me. I wish, <laughs> I'd, I wish I'd been more like you when I was younger. Maybe that would be my advice. Be, be more like Charlie. <laughs> 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 if someone were to play you in your life story who would it be a noble i cannot play you just yet give me a few years <laughs> oh, i want it. i want you to play me are you not allowed am i not allowed to say you no i i don't have I, you, you need to give me a few years that would be great if you played me i could sing and dance i would be ideal we could make it a musical <laughs> <laughs> that would be it would be misleading. It would make me look like I'm a lot better than I am, but I, I, I'd be up for that. <laughs> Do you still get in trouble off your mum? Uh, <laughs> um, you probably have to ask my mum for that question. Um, <laughs> I, uh, shall I call her and ask her? Yeah. Okay, I'll call her and ask her. <laughs> She might not pick up. Welcome to the O2 Messenger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's in trouble with me now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I'm in trouble. Yeah. Maybe I'm in trouble right now, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, maybe you've done something you don't even know you've done. <laughs> I think I think that's possible. <laughs> Um, and she's giving like, you the silent like treatment. Think, exactly. I'd like to think that I don't, but um, I, I might have to come back to you on that now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is your most annoying and worst habit? And be honest. And be honest. Um, I'm a neat freak, Charlie, and it's really annoying because I can't let anything be out for like longer than a few minutes before I feel a need to tidy it up. Um, and it's really annoying for my friends and my family and anyone who's around me. If you could have any superpower, any at all, what would, you, what would it be? I think that, yeah, I don't know whether it's just because it's, you know, a period of self-isolation, but, um, you know, I really look forward to being able to see my friends and my family um and you know people i know all over the world i think i've always liked the idea of teleporting um i think it's environmentally friendly and i think it'd be really useful have you ever tripped up in front of the camera at a red carpet event oh my charlie there's barely a red carpet event where i haven't tripped up i am one of the most <laughs> clumsy awkward people um i often i often do that after lockdown do you have any roles coming up where you need a child actor Oh, well, listen, I, th <laughs> I think we really need to. I think we've cracked a really good idea for a movie. I think me and you need to get Matt Damon on a Zoom meeting that I think is going to be a pretty big deal. I'm, I'm excited about it. <laughs> yeah, let's just <laughs> arrange this, try and arrange this thing with Matt Damon and yeah, we've got it. <laughs> Absolutely. I think we should. I think we should. I think he'd be, I think he'd be interested to at least hear our pitch, you know? We'll work on it and pitch it to him. <laughs> Styles and Drew to write any music and Cameron McIntosh to direct it. Are you perfect. Perfect. <laughs> now it's for a round of quickfire questions. Okay, quickfire. Ready? I'm ready. Text or talk? Oh, what did you say? Sorry, it broke up. Text or talk? Uh, talk. Favourite day of the week? Friday. Favourite city? London. Last song downloaded? Oh, um... Oh my gosh. Uh, ah, the last song I downloaded. Uh, wait, I'll tell you. On <laughs> the top, question JK. always stumps everybody. Sorry, on top, JK. Cool. First celebrity crush? Oh my gosh, um, uh, Selma Hayek. Favourite junk food? Um, my favourite junk food, oh, pizza, I love pizza. Childhood TV show? 
Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Socks with or without sandals? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with actually. Yeah, controversial. I know. <laughs> we all have different fashion choices. <laughs> oh dear. Cereal or toast? Toast. Yeah. Chocolate or Haribo? Oh, that, that is splitting my heart in two, Charlie. <laughs> Chocolate covered Haribo. No, that's gross. I don't know. Uh, that. that sounds no. absolutely <laughs> gross. No, I'm, I'm going to go with chocolate. Favourite Harry Potter character? I've got to go with Ron. Oh. Yeah, got to go with Ron. Last oh, yeah. but not least, remember when I told mm. you to keep your best impression at the ready? Okay. <laughs> Please, could you do your best impression for me? I will do one of mine for you. Okay, amazing. Um, so, my, I think my best impression is a very obscure one, but it's good to introduce other people. So, tell me your impression and I'll introduce your person in the voice that I was planning on doing. Does that make sense? Mine is actually my fave Harry Potter character. It's actually Dobby. Oh my God. Okay, amazing. All right, so <laughs> my, my favorite voice to do is the, the man who announces people on X Factor. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you as Dobby, okay? Okay. Okay, here we go. It's time to face the music! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dobby! Master, master, let give Dobby a sock! Dobby is free! <laughs> well done, Will. Well done. I love it. Well done, you. Thank you so much, Will. It was a pleasure and an honour talking to you. Charlie, thank you so much for having me on. You are amazing an inspiration and I appreciate you so much and you're a great friend. Thank you. You're a great friend as well. So remember, if you want to help make a difference, everybody, then hit that subscribe button up there. Thank you so much, Will. I can't thank you enough. Absolute pleasure, Charlie. I'll speak Bye. to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.